Congratulations on, our, on your book, Michael. Uh, I thought it was an interesting idea the first time you told me about it. It yeah. does seem like there's this sort of, you know, there's anger out there and yeah. nobody's really made sense of it. So I'm glad that you took the time to do that. Um, I, I would say one thing that strikes me as a journalist reading your book, since you're an academic, is that you operate like a reporter. You're unusually oh. adventurous. And yeah. so uh, I would ask you, you know, why, why do you do your books that way, where you're sort of out and about and talking to different people? Um, well, first of all, I, I, I think I, I appreciate that. And mm -hmm. um, I, I want sometimes to be out and about. I want to be out and in, in, in talking to people, and I don't want to sit and just manipulate numbers. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I have found these kinds of interviews to be really revealing, particularly with uh, people that I don't particularly understand or I don't really get their worldview. I mean, I actually didn't start this book uh, thinking I was going to go do a whole lot of interviews with different groups. Um, my first, uh, the, the work, for example, the chapter that's on the extreme right wing, mm -hmm. uh, the neo-Nazis and white supremacists, I figured um, they have, they're so wired and they have so many websites and chat rooms, I figured I could do most of it on the internet. Mm -hmm. And so um, I would go onto these chat rooms and, you know, and listen to people talking. and. But it occurred to me, I was, I, was, I, was, I was on these chat rooms, that there would be like eight people and they would be saying all these horrible things. And suddenly it dawned on me that like, you know, there's eight people here and four of them are probably graduate students in anthropology. <laughs> and, right. you know, one of them is like a high school kid who's like goofing around. Right, and right. two are, the, are actually real white supremacists and the other one is like me. So right. I thought, well, you know, I can't, and I can't tell who's who. You can't trust but verify. <laughs> it's know. like, how are you going to verify? Right, right so, exactly. So as you know, as a journalist, you got to have, so, so you have to have sources that you can at least see. trust, at least see them. So I decided to go, you know, go talk to them. And then as I began to do that research, um, as I was actually w working on, on Guyland as well, I, uh, I began to realize that I was going to want to talk to people for all of the other chapters as much as I could. So let's talk about your relationship with Rick, who you start the yeah. book with in a gun show, because I think it will give the watchers a sense of who we're talking about, what, what's, what sociology, where are we in America, right. and, and also a little bit about your relationship with the people that you're interviewing. So who's Rick? Well, Rick is a, is a guy that I met um, mm -hmm. at one of the very first uh, places that I went to interview um, white supremacists and neo-Nazis, th members Which is of where, the extreme right. Like, where are we? Well, this okay. is really interesting. You know, when I've told friends that I was going to be doing work on uh, the extreme right, they said, oh, you're going to have to go to the, you know, the deep south, the home of the Klan or something like that. And I said, well, I don't think so. And it turned out, I met him right outside of Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Because along the actual Mason-Dixon line mm -hmm. uh, today, uh, there are quite a large number of, uh, you know, white supremacists, you know, extreme right-wing strongholds. And, and it turns out that in a lot of suburban uh, schools along the Mason-Dixon line, western New Jersey, mm -hmm. southern Pennsylvania, you know, a lot of public schools are so starved for cash that some of these schools actually rent out their their uh, their auditorium their gyms mm -hmm. for gun shows on weekends. <laughs> that's, that's, so that's so hilarious. I walked into yeah. basically what is a high school, uh -huh. uh, and there's you know and inside the the gym there's just ra you know tables and tables and tables mm -hmm. of guns, um, and uh, uh, but is outside, there also like a middle school basketball game? <laughs> going no on no at the same nothing time? going on yeah. at the same time. Yeah. But at this but but. As you walk in, there are tables out in front with lots of pamphlets, uh -huh. right? Not the, you know, pr prior to entering the gun show. Uh -huh. And the pamphlets are all how the government's trying to take away your yeah, right yeah. to own guns, and uh -huh. the government's doing this, and Obama's doing that, and Obamacare's terrible. And so those were the guys I wanted to talk to, because they were the guys with the, uh, with the leaflets, the uh -huh. ideas. Uh -huh. And so, um, so I went up to the, w this one table, and I just sort of said, you know, is, it, I picked up a pamphlet that says, this yours? Uh -huh. And, you know, but about three or four guys standing around at the table sort of talking and, you know, and they looked at me kind of suspiciously and I, and they said, who well, are no you? Well, no offense, but you sound like what you are, you know? Well, I, yes, of course. You I sound mean, like a New York guy, right? right. So it's not, I, it's hard to hide. I'm, I'm, I'm a New York, uh, I'm a Brooklyn, right. you know, Jewish sociologist, right? right? So, you know, like, just, what, what, Feminist. Pick, pick, pick two. Yes, you know? exactly. Uh, but, but I, I, and so, of course, I'm not, and I'm not going to, like, fake some accent and pretend to be, like, Could one of the guys. Could you do it? Could you even do it if I, you tried? I, yeah. I doubt it, right, <laughs> yeah. actually, but, but I don't think I would try. So, uh -huh. I, but I, so, so I, I said to them, you know, like, is this your stuff? And they said, yeah, who are you? And 
I said, well, actually, I'm a, I'm a right, I'm an academic, I'm a researcher, and I'm doing research on you know the, these these organizations, these ideas, and trying to understand the guys about it. And I actually study men who believe this stuff, and they, you know, a bunch of them said, you looked at me suspiciously and mm -hmm. said, all, you know, sort of asked me questions, and I just said, look, look, here's what I am, you know, mm -hmm. I don't get it. So, but here's my job. I want to understand how you guys see the world. Uh, I want to understand. The, your worldview. It is, look, you will not convince me, and mm -hmm. I will not convince you. That's off the table. Mm -hmm. What is on the table is I want to understand why you think the way you do. Um, now, here's, so, so here's the thing that was interesting. Now, I would say roughly half of the guys I approached would not talk to me. So there are biases in my research, and I'll mm -hmm. acknowledge those. What'd but, they say? But what the, was the, they just say? I don't, yeah, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk. Yeah, basically, I don't want to talk to you. You know, you'll you'd never understand. You know, uh, you know, one or two said mm -hmm. said something anti-Semitic, but it was vague and not really right. it, rather rather thin and surface. Right. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, but basically, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. Right. But the guys who did, here's basically my pitch. Mm -hmm. Your whole complaint, as I understand it, is you are the forgotten American. Mm -hmm. You are the Americans on whose back this country was built. Mm -hmm. You fought its wars. You built its bridges. You've, you've, you've built the country, and no one's listening to you. Mm -hmm. I will. Nice, I will listen to you. Yeah. Now, I will not agree with you. Mm -hmm. I, that's not why I'm here. Mm -hmm. But I will listen. I promise. My job is to, fa as faithfully as I can, represent the world as you see it. That's what I want to do. So if you can trust that, I'm willing to talk to you. So who's the guy? Like, just paint a picture, you know, does he well, work, does he not work? Like, before we get to what his views are, kind of sure. age, race, you know, well, social class, like, who, who are we talking about just for this part? I know Okay, just for this part. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I do want to say that, the, that the, this is only one chapter of the yeah, book yeah. in which I try to, try to take up the pulse of a lot of different groups. Mm -hmm. But I'll describe Rick to you a little bit because he was sort of impish and funny mm -hmm. when we met for the first time mm -hmm. privately. Uh, we had breakfast the next morning at, mm -hmm. a, at a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so he's, he, he's about uh, mid-30s. Mm -hmm. He does have a job. Um, and uh, he was working in a construction crew. But here's the thing that's interesting about him. And all of the guys who are on the extreme right with whom I spoke, mm -hmm. all of them have the same class background. They are downwardly mobile, lower middle class. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the guys you talk to in the end of men are, mm -hmm. have the same, you mm -hmm. know, their fathers were independent farmers, mm -hmm. small shopkeepers, mm -hmm. mon pa grocers. They closed the store when Walmart moved in. The independent farmers got foreclosed. Not factory? Well, yes. Yeah. High wage, union protected yeah. factory workers, and the factory closed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? So these guys are downwardly mobile. They will not have the kind of wages nor the kind of j job protection that their fathers had. And in, and in fact, many of them, you know, they were like, you know, Smith and Sons. Right. They were the sons. Right. Right. And they and, and or or a lot of their, their a lot of the guys I talked to were independent, non-union contract workers, plumbers, electricians, uh -huh. but not union off the off the books. Uh -huh. um, but they were all downwardly mobile. That was their background. Mm -hmm. So Rick shows up, you know, and he decides he's going to be he's going to be playful with me. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons that I chose him to introduce the book. Mm -hmm. it, so he wears an old flannel shirt and a weathered Pittsburgh Pirates baseball hat because we're in, in now, you know, sort of in central Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. um, but he also wears a Confederate, a, a black T-shirt with a Confederate flag mm -hmm. on it. And so he opens. So as he sits down, he kind of opens his flannel shirt and he sort of goes like this and says, I wore this just for you. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> just to hit all the stereotypes. Right. Just wants right. to give it to me, you yeah. know, give it to me. So, so, so I don't have to make him up. Right, exactly. <laughs> right, right. Um, so, so and, and the thing is, he's also, so he's, he and his wife are trying to make it um, on far less he's wages. Married. And far, yep, he's married. Mm -hmm. He's far less secure. Has two kids, mm -hmm. um, five and seven, I think, at the time that mm -hmm. I interviewed him. Um, really unhappy with the quality of schools. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, but I, and of course, the, the conversations we weren't going to have is, wouldn't it be nice if you had free child care? Wouldn't it be nice if yeah, you yeah. had, if you had, if you right. could exercise your right to free health care or, right, right. you know, reasonable right. health, reasonable right. cost health care? We didn't have those conversations. Uh -huh. We had a conversation about what he expected as he was growing up, mm -hmm. what he thought was going to be his mm -hmm. and what he didn't get mm -hmm. and how he feels, um, v you know, somewhat uh, basically screwed by the system. Like things have been taken away from yes. him that were rightfully and, his. And that's, 
And that, in a sense, that's the, the line, that's the, 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 the kind of connective tissue among all of the different mm -hmm. chapters. So my book has some resonance.